Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now, time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Sick and tired Living in a town Filled with narrow minds And hate They used to laugh at me Their children called me Hello, hello, hello And thank you so much for tuning in To A Spoonful of Comfort I am Claudine Jackson I am your host for A Spoonful of Comfort That I thought we needed more comfort In the world well, I had no idea how much comfort we were going to need. So I hope that you are giving comfort to others, but also to yourself. I want to thank the viewers for t turning in to a spoonful, tuning in to a spoonful of comfort. I want to thank uh, R.J. Watkins and Henry Tyler for keeping WHPR going far longer. They kept it going long enough for me to... to get a show on here my husband was involved with the station many years ago I never expected to be but I thank them I thank the, the people who got out and voted didn't we see democracy in action that's the way democracy is supposed to work if you get someone that you don't like or that can't measure up to the job then you vote them out of office but this is the first time that in America's history that the person who's voted out of office refuses to be voted out of office. So they don't know the true meaning of democracy. But I thank all of you who got out, waited in line, voted, uh, pandemic and all. Thank you so much. I want to thank the people who donated uh, to the Purvis Foundation, even with all that's going on. There are people who still find it in their heart to help children with handicaps. You know, the Purvis Foundation got started because of Purvis Jr., who is handicapped by autism. And I know what parents of handicapped children go through. So um, we couldn't raise money this year, and you know why. But there are people that are still supporting us. So the people that are supporting the Purvis Foundation, thank you so much. And I talked about uh, voting. You know, we're in a democracy. And in a democracy, we have freedom of speech. And I'm using my freedom of speech. I never even thought about freedom of speech until I became the parent of a son who could not talk. Talking is so easy for me. So uh, I'm using my freedom of speech, but I'm trying to use it in a, a positive manner. So remember, America got a lot of problems, but we do have a democracy here. So I want to uh, introduce my very special guest to you. Um, my guest, is one of my uh, most special guests, She's been knowing me all of her life because this is my daughter, Minister Cindy. So thank you, Cindy, for joining us on the show. It's always a delight and an honor to come on with you, Mom. And it's always a, a delight and an honor to have you on. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about 
how we're treating people. Yes. Um, they, we see so much conflict and confusion and people that are, are disagreeing with each other and yes. being very disagreeable. Yes. You have the right to disagree with me, but you don't have the right to beat me up because you disagree with me. So um, I'm trying to remember, I'm going to share some of the scriptures with you about how to treat people. Yes. But we all know how to treat people. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That is the golden rule. Some people do unto others before they do unto you. Mm -hmm. We're not that kind of people. If you're watching this show, you're not that kind of person. So one of the scriptures about how to treat people is 1 Thess Thessalonians 5 and 11. Therefore, encourage one another yes. and build each other up. That's what we're supposed oh, to do. Yes. A lot of people don't do that because it's easier to tear somebody down than to build them up. But if you're watching this show, you are probably not one of the ones that are tearing people down. <laughs> and also the people who are going through something. Yes. This pandemic has a lot of people uh, suffering who have lost. But I want to uh, remind you that you might be down but you're not going to stay down. God is going to revive you and lift you back up. And he's going to restore re you. Our God is in the healing and restoring business. For I will satisfy the weary soul and every languishing sh soul I will replenish. He giveth power to the weak and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Yes. I've been both. So um, if life has knocked you to your knees, well, you might as well pray. You're on your knees anyhow. All right. So, Cindy, what do you have to say about? Um, I read something, a Facebook post, maybe three or four days ago, and it was so disturbing to me. It was from a minister, a man of God that I really respect. And the post was so distasteful, poking fun at a, another minister that he didn't agree with. So the two things I would like to say concerning that is that God gave us freedom of choice. Yes. And just because you don't believe or agree with somebody's stance doesn't mean that you post things to humiliate them or belittle them. And we can look at the example of David. The Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. David uh, committed egregious sins. Uh, uh, fornication, murder, lying, but he still was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he made some uh, re very bad mistakes, but God didn't turn his back on him, and that didn't mean he was evil or wicked. The Bible says for us to be kind one to another, and for ministers of God or men and women of God to, to do these things that belittle people or poke fun at them is not a good example. And plus, we can find ourselves in judgment because the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm, whether you agree with them or not. If you don't agree, pray. If you don't agree, say, Lord, give me understanding. Why do they feel like this? Where are they coming from? But when you put your mouth on God's anointed, you can find yourself getting into some trouble you could have avoided. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's so easy to be kind. Yes. Well, it's easy for some of us to be kind. Now, for those of us that it's easy for us to be kind, we have a responsibility to be kind. Yes. Um, if someone has hurt you, can you forgive them? Yes. Even without them asking for your forgiveness. Forgiveness is... Uh, good for the forgiver and you know the lord's prayer everyone knows the lord's prayer forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us if you forgive others then god forgives you so um can you forgive you know one i had two very difficult times to forgive someone in my life but once i did the forgiving i felt lighter and you know what mom i think you should ask them will you forgive because they can if they want to yes yes you you can forgive and it's good for the forgiver yes. i didn't realize that yes. i didn't realize that and i got blessings because of forgiving 
And another thing, since you said that, since you opened that can of, it's not worms, <laughs> but medical studies have proven that unforgiveness and bitterness cause some sicknesses. Yes. The high blood pressure and arthritis and strokes and depression. And so that doesn't mean everybody who has these things may have unforgiveness or bitterness but they're interconnected and so you can even keep your physical man healthier by releasing unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred and anger all those things that work against the health of our in internal man right and uh it says love your enemies and bless them that cursed you and do do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you. So, Mother, I'm not seeing that a lot during this That's election stuff. Absolutely, absolutely, which is why we're trying to remind people of what they already know. We already know this. But uh, it's such a divided time. But you don't have to see eye to eye to walk hand in hand. Yes. And you, you can disagree without being disagreeable. Preach, you mother. You can agree to disagree. Preach, mama. Um, you don't have to straighten everybody out. If someone, dis if you disagree with someone, some sometimes it's not important enough to get your blood pressure up trying to convince them to come around to your way of thinking. And mom, the Bible also says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Sometimes we're arguing or disagreeing about something that we don't really even have the information, the research to even argue about. Uh, a pastor brought some points out the other day when I was at a service and I really didn't want to hear it. I'm thinking, well, I didn't come here for this. But by the time he finished, I understood some things a lot better. And so I encourage us do our research find out what's behind some of these things that we may not agree with or we may not understand but let's make sure we know what we are protecting and supporting and even rejecting absolutely and um one of my favorite scriptures second chronicles 20 and 17 you don't even have to fight just stand still just take your position stand still and watch god work if you let god settle your case it will be settle much better and he will pay you back even more and i am a witness to the fact that these things the promises in the scriptures are fulfilled in you if you believe and if you follow god's instructions you know the bible is our blueprint it's our instructions for how to live our life and if you believe and if you follow your and you don't have to be perfect god does not ex That's expect right. us to be perfect god doesn't expect us to always be strong he knows that we're going to have our weak moments but he says that when we're having our weak moments is when he, he comes in he's strong through us yes yes so um I, i'm saying all this because we're going through such troubling times now yes. we're with the pandemic and the protesters and i never would have expected in the United States of America, the biggest and best country in the world, that we would be the undesirable country now. Yeah. And that a plague would come that would blanket the whole world. I'm the one that said it couldn't happen in modern days. And you mentioned that we're like living in biblical times again. Yeah. And this is, this, this is, um, biblical proportions of things that happen but it's it's multiplied yes uh, because when people were talking about when we had the i think the spanish flu and other other pandemics or things of the sort a lot of times they didn't have the other things that were going on like we have the civil unrest right. we had the election and then we have the pandemic and then we have the left and right of the pandemic which is why it's here and what is it supposed to do? And so there's just a whole bunch of things together happening. And I want to remind you about your health. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm talking about how to treat others, but how do you treat yourself? Yes. Are you kind to yourself? Do you take care of yourself? Um, if you watch your diet and exercise, the experts have been telling us this for many years. Yes. Of course, it took me 50 years to start listening. Uh, never too late. Never too late. Eat more fruits and vegetables. 
Drink more water. Water washes the toxins out of your body, and it also carries the nutrients through your body. Yes. So our body is made of liquid. So if we drink more water, I had to start drinking more water. I had to start eating more fruits and vegetables. Um, and you get do enough yoga. Rest. Yes. And yes. walk. Physical fitness. Yes. So yoga is my physical. Do something for physical fitness. Yoga is my physical fitness of choice. Uh, get a lot of rest and sleep. And during this pandemic, we're getting plenty <laughs> of rest and sleep. And who ever would have thought that while you're giving health tips, you'd have to say, Wear your mask, wash your hands, maintain social distance, which is I took my mask on to do the show because you probably couldn't have heard me through it. But um, we're going through uh, unpredictable and unpredicted times. Well, they were predicted. But uh, take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. And pamper yourself you you deserve it especially those of you who have been through something so cindy what is your physical fitness well you know um i'm a runner of uh, 5k is my my run of choice even though i will do a 10k uh i love to bicycle i'm a liturgical dancer i also love ballroom and stepping i love to skate anything outdoors or anything uh, athletic that's what i like to do and I'm not athletic, so yoga is good for someone who's not athletic. Right, but you did walk like three miles. Was that your first? Do you furthest? call that athletic? You walk walked three miles. That's good. Yes, that's good. I um, walking. It, all the all the experts when they say physical fitness, they say start with walking. Yes, and they are right. Like I said, it took me a, a long time to listen to them, but. Uh, I'm glad I did, and it's never too late to improve. It's never too late to improve anything. I'm improving. Um, I'm improving my eating habits, and I'm going to improve. I can't lie and say that I'm improving, but I'm going to improve getting things in order, like closets and dresser drawers and things like that. Right, but long long as you prioritize what's best yes. for you. And I wanted to mention, I was watching a show, I think it's called My One Ton Family or something like that. Oh. And this woman weighed close to 700 pounds. Wow. And she had only been, she had a, a connecting bathroom and she had only been to the bathroom for like four years. She hadn't been out of her room or something like that. But when her mother passed away and she couldn't attend the funeral, she was determined to get in better health. So her first step was just walking from the bedroom to the living room. So for some of you that may have limitations or health issues, walk around the house. And then after you get built up, maybe walk to the sidewalk and walk back. Just start wherever Just start. you can. That's right. And um, re remember when I'm saying be good to yourself as well as be kind to yourself and treat yourself well. And remember, if you try to please everyone, you might not please anyone. But if you please yourself, you'll know that one person is pleased. Yes. And, you know, there's an old saying, to thine own self be true. So I'm going to share a few of my poems. Um, my book, The Butterfly, which was supposed to be uh, promoted during this year. Of course, the pandemic came along and my butterfly wasn't able to fly this year. But. Butterfly is still there. So I want to share with you uh, a few poems from the butterfly. This one is called Peace on Earth. You know, this is the season where we usually uh, uh, promote peace on earth. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. We've heard these words again and again. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Will it ever happen in a world full of sin? Well, we have to hope and we have to believe. Our Father in heaven, how sad he must be. He wants good in the world, so he needs you and me. Some things we can't do, it's out of our hands. But we can be kind to our fellow man. Yes. This is the season to open our hearts. If we want peace on earth, we must do our part. Yes. This is the time for us to shine. It's hard now. But this is the time for us to shine, to help God with his plan, 
to love and help each other and do the best we can. There is much that we cannot do to ease the pain on earth, but we don't have to add to it. We can increase our worth. We can be the peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. We can be God's helping hands because on this earth he needs some friends. So let us let the Christmas spirit last the whole year through. Let us be the ones who care. The good lies in me and you. And I believe that if you're watching this show, that you already know that. So, Mom, when you said that, I began to think about what type of person do you want to be? Do you want to be the straw that broke the camel's back, the last nail in the coffin? Do you really want to push someone over the edge or cause someone to become depressed or hopeless? Or do you want to be the person that gives a pat on the back, that loans that $5, that gives someone a ride, that calls somebody and say, you know what, I was just thinking about you, or sends them a card? You can determine, we all determine, and even if you're a person that's on the other side, you can say, you know what, I'm about to change my ways. I'm about to become a light in the world. I'm about to become a blessing to people. And if you don't have the money, you, you can do the phone calls, the texting, the cards it doesn't cost a lot right. and you you can be somebody to be a lifter of people instead of somebody as my mother says she does never want to kick a person when they're down so just be a lifter of humanity and encourage yourself you know we we have we have endurance we might not want to endure but God equipped us yes, with endurance did. yes he did so we have to endure now Endurance means that you go through a trying time or a, a stressful time, but you don't lose heart or give way. And it's important for us to keep our faith now because faith helps us to endure. Yes. Faith helps encourage us. Yes. And the words of the scriptures were written 2,700 years ago. And you know what, Mom? It says, in this world, you will have troubles. Right. And it talks about afflictions and troubles. So what my mom is just encouraging us that no matter what afflictions, troubles, and problems come, there is a God that we can hold on to and a hope for us. That's right. And a God that cares about us. Yes. He, as Cindy said, he did not promise us that the road would be easy. He did not promise us sunshine all the time but he equips us to be able to deal with the times when when they're not uh, he equips us to deal with the times when things aren't uh, going well trust in him okay so uh, we're going to take a short break in a minute because our wonderful engineer Tim Smith who keeps the wheels rolling around here one of the people that's right just informed me that he he can play a video that uh i wanted him to play i didn't know if he could play it today so can i but say one short thing it. before yes. that um i just want to send my condolences to rosemary durod uh, who i went to school with durod he and i were classmates and i just want to send my condolences and we are you know doing a fundraiser to do a couple of things for him it's on my facebook page if you're interested but i just wanted to send my condolences out to the uh, highland park basketball team the class of 75 everybody else that knew him the uh, u of d family the boston celtics the pistons and the detroit firefighters he was a firefighter for 27 years all right um so are we ready, Mr. Engineer, for the video? All right. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, she was born in Detroit in 1924, and today her family helped her celebrate her 96th birthday, 2020 style. Grace Mae Gilbert, you heard it there, gathered with her family this afternoon with a drive-up celebration in Detroit's Boston Edison neighborhood. Her family says they had planned to have a big party for Grace, but had to cancel it due to the pandemic. They were still able to pull off this surprise, though. I love all of them, and uh, they, they, they shocked me. They, done, they didn't tell me nothing. Many people in their family died early, but her and her brother have just been around quite a while. She was a beautician for years in, on the North End, and um, just a wonderful inspiration to us. 
Grace is looking good there. Her and her older brother, 97-year-old brother, represent the eldest of the family. They were all present on this special occasion. And the youngest is Grace's great-great-granddaughter, who is just nine months old. How cool is that? Thank you, Tim. He just worked a miracle because I brought him the video, but I didn't know he would be able to play it today. And you're seeing my children, my grandchildren, my mother, who just turned 96. And we are so thankful that she is still healthy. She is still vital. She's still full of life. She has memories of times when she forgets things, but we all forget things. So uh, I am just so proud of her yes. for having attained that ripe old age intact, T-A-C-T, and to let us know that we can, because now we keep hearing so much about death. It's uh, just taking so many people that I know personally in my life. So it's nice to celebrate life. And the fact that up until last year, she still wore her three inch high heels That's right. and was still dancing. And her brother, who is 97, uh, he uh, ballroom danced up until I think a year ago. So not only are they living long, but they're vibrant. And we are so thankful for that because it wasn't always so in our it family. It wasn't always so. And an, another thing that I wanted to mention is that the Spinners have a new album out. If you have watched the show before, you know that I was married to Purvis Jackson, the bass singer of the Spinners, until he passed away in uh, August of uh, 08. So there's only one remaining Original. founding member of yeah. the Spinners, and that's Henry Fambro. Yes. But the new, the new set of Spinners are wonderful they keep that sound they're pr doing performances and uh the name of the new album is back on the block i think i got that right if i don't someone will correct me and the spinners all they're all dressed in white there's marvin taylor jesse peck ronnie moss uh and the new uh, henry fambro and the new spinner is cj jefferson who used to be with the temptations and uh, he also produces. So I don't know if he helped produce this album or not. But be on the lookout for the Spinner's new album. They're all wearing white suits on the cover of the album. And I'm so thankful because uh, the, the older Spinner's had many records, yes. many recordings. Yes. The newer Spinner's did not have any recordings. So now we are they have a recording. Very happy for them. We are very happy for them. And the Spinner's were... Uh, my mentors, basically, Purvis is the one that convinced me to do media and to write and to speak. Because whatever Motown taught them in artist development, he came home and taught me. And I would say, well, Purvis, you're the, the media person. I'm not. And he'd say, one day you're going to be glad I'm telling yes, you this. Yes, he would say that. And he's right. Yes. One day Yes. So uh, another poem that I want to share with you, this is not in the butterfly, it's one of my older poems. He who holds the future, when storms are raging round me and I'm drowning in quicksand and unhappy things are happening, things that I don't understand, when I don't know what else to do, I'll just do what I can. Because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand and your hand. And it's time for us to go, but thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. Thank you, my lovely daughter, for being my guest today. I greatly appreciate it. And remember, you have a spoonful of comfort. A spoonful yes. is the minimum amount of comfort anybody can give. And even my handicapped son wants to give comfort. Yes, he does. sick and tired living in a town filled with narrow minds and hate they used to laugh at me the children called me names I would run and hide feeling so ashamed just for being born I was just
just a boy punished for a crime that was not mine. Life ain't so easy when you're a ghetto child. Oh, baby, life ain't so easy when you're a ghetto child. No one tried to act understand. So bad.